Two, one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. If you can see and hear me, please let me know. Technical gremlins just before going live, as is typical. Um, it is just after three o'clock here in the UK. Um, give me a thumbs up. Give me something to let me know you can see and hear me okay, because I really don't know if everything's working as it should be today. Uh, we got complications, but if you can see me, let's see who we've got here. We've got Scott's in the house. We've got Thaddeus. Uh, Ray is here. Sue is here. Grey Elephant Club is here. Nuna is here. All good, says Pierre. Cool. BNA says hello. Uh, thumbs up from Scott. All good. Great. Wonderful. Good stuff. Okay. Um, I didn't have time to update my slide thing today, nor have I had time to pick a winner for the T-shirt. So um, last time we did a live was two weeks ago, and I've been on holiday since, and now I'm back. And uh, the prize for commenting on last time was, was the Michael Essick logo T-shirt. And someone's going to win this, but I haven't picked a winner yet. So uh, we'll do that after this stream. And... Uh, yeah, we'll do that then. Um, a couple of other things to mention. Who have we got coming in? We got Barbara, we got Bill, we got Sharik, Bonnie, Alf is here, Kushbu is here, Dana is here, Ron is here, Anna and Emily. Cool. Thank you for joining me to get today, guys. We're going to do some live t shirt designing and reviewing and such. Uh, it's going to be a good one, I think, as long as the technical gremlins stay away. But uh, yeah, so a couple of things um, on today. Uh, let me go through here. So, yeah, you can like and subscribe. That would be great. If you can give me a thumbs up wherever you are, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be wonderful. Uh, you can sign up at michaelessig.com forward slash live to get uh, free resources, PDFs, and stuff that we've used in recent streams. Uh, you can ask questions live, and I'll try to answer them as we go. And uh, stay till the end, not to win a T-shirt this week. This information is out of date. Um, but to win a copy of my book. A little book of T-shirt ideas, which you can win. And I'll tell you how at the end of the stream. Okay, without further ado, we have um, quite a few T-shirts to review and get into today. Um, Thank you for everyone who sent some in. I did have a couple of notes just before we get started. Um, if you don't see your design, this is perhaps why. Um, number one, quite a few people sent in photos, um, like photography, as in a nice picture of a sunset or something like that. Um, that's not really something I can review. It's not something I'm familiar with. I don't sell photography online. I license designs and arts and usually funny pun-based things like that. Um, so photography, just not really my bag. So um, sorry about that. I won't be able to review those. Also, some people have sent in like paintings, sometimes quite abstract paintings and stuff. Again, not something I've ever really sold online on Redbubble or Merch or any of these platforms or through my own site. So it's not something I can really comment on or help you with, um, unfortunately. So sorry about that. Um, a couple of other things. A few people have been sending in things which are really difficult for me to get a handle on. So whether that's a design that I don't really understand, sometimes people just send in what looks pretty much like clip art. So if you sent in, for example, a cat wearing sunglasses or a shark holding a strawberry, I won't be reviewing those because there's just very little for me to, to advise on. What, what I'm going to focus on and the designs we'll look at today are those designs that I feel I can offer some improvement on and share some ideas and really help you push that design to the next level. If you don't have a hook, if you don't have a market, if you don't really know who you're designing for, and a good test is to go back to the, the who, the why, and the how questions. So who is going to wear this shirt? Why are they going to wear this shirt? And how are they going to find it? If you can't answer those questions, even just a little bit, then um, I'm probably going to struggle to review your shirt. And it's probably going to leave your your submission at the bottom of the pile because I just don't know what to say. And obviously, I am limited for time. I have to pick um, pick and choose which designs I'm going to review, which are going to be most helpful for, for everyone to kind of see. Um, so yeah, a couple of points there before we dive in. But having said all that, there are a few for us to get through today. 
Um, so let's do it. Uh, just see any other little comments here. We got Gary in the house. Cool. We got Anne Holloway. Glenda is here. Eileen. And uh, yeah, great. Okay. So thank you for all. Thank you all of you for joining me. And um, let's dive into some of these t-shirts. So I think this is my spreadsheet here with some t-shirts in. And let's start up with this one from Lance. I'll zoom this in a little bit here. So this one came from Lance. Um, and it says Connecticut, and it is a cat in the shape of the state of Connecticut. So um, I like this. This is my kind of speed. <laughs> you know, simple pun design, uh, very simple, uh, pretty universal. I think almost everyone can get it, but it has obviously a couple of groups that, that it could appeal to specifically. So let's uh, let me fire up my iPad and um, give a couple of pointers on this. It'd be cool if I could keep this. I don't think I can keep multiple screens up. So I've got to take this one down to um, fire my iPad up, unfortunately. But um, if you can keep in mind the Connecticut, um, then this will be this will be more helpful for you. So the Connecticut design. Um, yeah, I was just going to say that as a concept wise, of course, we can all get the joke Connecticut. It's a simple pun. But of course, you've got kind of two groups. You've got people who like cats. That's one group. And then you've got people who are have some kind of connection to Conne Connecticut. Spelt weird, isn't it? Um, so two different groups that you can appeal to there, which obviously kind of gives you a couple of niches and markets to target when you're looking at keywords and stuff. You can, you know, use both of those. There's an overlap between these two, which is pretty cool. Um, just gives you something else to go at as well. So it's not just, I mean, in some ways you can say, on one hand, it appeals to people who like cats. On the other hand, it appeals to people who like Connecticut. And in the middle, um, there's obviously a joke, which is funny, and that appeals to people who like jokes. So you've almost got one, two, three different, you know, approaches that you can target with a design like this. Um, so all that to say that uh, that's kind of why I like a design like this, and it's my kind of speed. Um, a couple of ideas on the design, which oh, it would be great if we could see it. Um, okay, let me just kind of review the design and then I'll sh share a couple of specific ideas. Um, so on the design itself, um, nice and simple, that, that's good. Uh, I don't know how many people know the, obviously if you're from Connecticut, you probably would recognize the shape of the state of Connecticut, and that's the visual joke that's going on. It's a cat in the shape of the state. Um, I think the the positioning of the cat could you could spend a bit more time thinking about how to do this, um, but I think in terms of overall layout, it's pretty much there. You don't have you know there's not many ways you can make this this design. Um, you know you're going to have to have the graphic and you're going to have to have some text. So whether you have the text at the top or the bottom. Uh, that's up to you, not really a, a major one, but let me kind of show you how I would perhaps lay this out a little bit differently. Um, oh, I think Lance is here. He says he's got 10 different versions of this cat. So yeah, I think the the thing that came to mind for me was that yours looks a little bit like this and it is quite, um, it's a vector vector image. Sorry, this is a bit longer like that. It's a vectorized image, and you've got the cat's kind of face right in the middle here with a little paw sticking out there. Um, I would perhaps uh, want to say that you could do... I was thinking maybe if the cat had his head kind of like down in this direction, and then you could kind of have a leg here, and this could be the tail coming around or something. Um, I think that might be a, a nicer way to visually lay, lay out the cat. Um, and I think because you've done it as a kind of vector, so it's very bold lines, which is good usually for t-shirts, but I just wonder whether you could do, you know, you could do more of a rough edge to the thing. You can have it a little, you know, kind of some fur and stuff and do it as a bit more of an illustrative style because then it's, um, I don't know, it looks a bit more like a cat. <laughs> it looks like a cat rolled up into the shape of the state of Connecticut rather than, here's the silhouette of Connecticut and I've just whacked a cat's face on top of it. So all that to say, you know, just a couple of different ways of approaching it. Another idea before we move on to our next design is um, 
I thought you could do something like if this is our shape of Connecticut, roughly, um, you could do something like uh, I've seen this done a few times where you draw a load of little cats um, making up the silhouette. So obviously this is a, these look more like bunnies, but <laughs> but you just kind of fill the space in. I'm just going to kind of speed this up a little bit. And you just kind of have a collection of cats. And I thought that could be, you know, something you could go at as well. You could maybe do something like, um, I don't know, cats of Connecticut or kittens of Connecticut or something like that. And uh, there's a couple of good good examples of um, people doing things like that. Um, but yeah, anyway, there's that, that first idea. Hope that helps you, Lance. A um, couple of ideas around that one there. Um, uh, Ron says, or even the whole shape could be just the head. Yeah, that's, that's another possibility. You could do something like that. Um, but yeah, no problem. Thank you, Lance. Okay, next one on my list. I think we'll go to Raymond, who has... Oops, share our screen here. You had this design and it says, will immortalize for food. So was it last time we did a review, there was someone who had a design, which was a Breaking Bad one and it, I didn't get it. And then everyone was like, it's Breaking Bad. And it's, I, was, I was speaking about it for like 10 minutes, um, not realizing what it was about. Now I'm assuming I get this one. It, I think, I mean, please comment in the comments if I'm missing something but i think it's pretty uh a straightforward joke it's a vampire and he's saying he will immortalize for food as in he will bite you thereby immortalizing you making you immortal um for food so i think that's a pretty simple joke i think i've got it i don't want to jump too far ahead because last time i presumed on a joke i was made to look a fool because i didn't get something that was underlying it uh, maybe i need to start asking people to submit a bit of a description with their designs um but anyway i think i've got this one i think it's pretty straightforward and i think i have some some advice on how we could improve this design as well um i'm, I'm just keeping half an eye on the comments to make sure i'm not missing anything obvious um but i think that's what's going on here um so if i spin over to the in fact let me just comment on kind of what we got here so the the vampire itself i think is not obvious that it's a vampire i think i had to kind of put two and two together and you know there was it took a couple of seconds but i think from the teeth and from the ears and from the text i realized it was a vampire but by looking at it initially the illustration style and stuff is not very clear at all so i think there's a lot more could be done there to make this look more like a vampire um it's a little bit abstract and a bit too vectory and a bit you know there's not enough detail and stuff so i'll kind of sketch out in a second how i would approach that um in terms of the rest of the in terms of the concept i think it's fine i think this this would work as a concept we don't need to you know we need to improve the elements but we don't need to reinvent the wheel here and the will immortalize for food um this is a this is obviously a font and it doesn't look great it looks pretty amateurish I would hand draw that, make sure it's hand drawn, give it a kind of, you know, authentic approach. If you look at um, someone like, um, I'm trying to remember, uh, Tobias Fonseca and his, um, I've got an interview with him on my blog. Let me see if I can find it. Tobias does, um, or Toby does, have a design not dissimilar which is one of his biggest sellers i think here we go i'm sorry for what i said when i was hungry so if you look at the the similarities between this and um and this one we've got the same kind of concept we've got a character holding up a sign expressing a message so it works this is one of toby's best selling designs i think so i think we can say confidently that the concept is solid and we don't need to make any major changes there but we could certainly improve the the approach so here's how i would go about doing something like that um i would say vampire needs to look a lot more vampire -y. vampires usually have kind of scary noses and they certainly have big pointy ears i'm kind of thinking nosferatu style um i guess this vampire is not actually angry so he doesn't need to look evil as such because he needs to look a bit more kind of 
I don't know, something like that. But it does need to be obvious that he's a he's a vampire, so we need perhaps a bit of a sad face, maybe a bit of a pointy kind of chin, something like that. Um, if it depends whether you want to do the kind of Nosferatu vampire or you want to do a more classic Universal Movie Studios, you know, big collars and you know black slick black hair kind of big cape um thing uh so yeah i would personally like the nosferatu star one he would have a kind of black cloak on maybe something like this could make him look like kind of uh homeless or something like that and have his sign here and then kind of have his i don't know like his how would you do that have his knees coming up along the side he could have big pointy scary feet um and his big clawy hands around it. Um, so yeah, something like this. Maybe that is a bit a bit too disturbing. Um, so yeah, with or without the legs, up to you. Um, it does look a bit disturbing, doesn't it? I don't like the legs. Scrap the legs. Sorry, Nos. Don't need your legs. Um, let's go for the more kind of head and shoulders approach. So could have his creepy el creepy arms sticking out the side or something like that. My proportions are all terrible, but something like that. Let's make this sign a little bit bigger. And then the text, um, I would certainly hand write it in a kind of, you know, creepy, scrappy looking way, but will immortalize for food. And I think, honestly, I don't, you know, with your design, um, sorry, I can't remember who was this, Raymond, I think. Yeah, Raymond. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've used a font. I don't think that's necessary, but you've also used um, a kind of blood effect on one of the fonts. I don't think that's necessary either. I think the idea of, you know, homeless vampire or something like that, homeless Nosferatu will immortalize for food. That's the joke. So you don't need to overcomplicate it with too much details and stuff. Um, so I would just go with something like this. And, uh, you know, this could be a nice, simple Halloween y uh, kind of joke design. I think it could. It could definitely work in both of those, you know, categories. It's a vampire. It's an evergreen kind of vampire joke, which also, of course, you would, of course, you'd want to include Halloween in the tags and stuff and try and push it out there for those specific um, holidays and stuff like that. But yeah, um, good, good uh, concept, Raymond. And I think it would, uh, it would work. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, BNA has got a good comment. So I think the original vampire had a five o'clock shadow to look and shave, and that's a good touch. So, yeah, uh, that's good. Anything you could do to make Nosferatu look especially um, unkempt. But, of course, he's bald, so he can't really have hair on his head. Would he grow a beard? Vampire experts can chime in. Um, OK, let's uh, let's move it on to the next one. It was a bit disturbing, wasn't it, Eileen, with the uh, with the legs? Um Sorry about that. I hope, hope you don't have nightmares on that. Um, my daughter was watching uh, Wallace and Gromit and the Curse of the Were-Rabbits, and she had nightmares for a couple of nights this week, so I feel guilty about that. Um, okay, what do we got here? Okay, here's a fun one. Um, Catrantine. So, um, Again, please correct me if I'm wrong about this one, but I think this is a simple pun on quarantine and a cat. And um, I picked it because I think it's a good... Um, the kind of motivation behind the design is good and solid. What's, what's weak is the execution, both in terms of the concept and the joke. Um, not so much in the design, which is actually okay. Could use a bit of improvement, but it's not... It's not bad by any by any means, um, but I think we've got some easier, lower hanging fruit that would make for a better um, joke here. So um, let me just kind of illustrate an idea here, which is the idea, of course, behind this is kind of a combination of quarantine and cats and putting those two things together. A bit like previously, we had Connecticut and cats. We've got a lot of cats today for some reason. Um, so let's let me just kind of illustrate this point. So if you think about how this is this is this is a very good technique for coming up with original ideas, especially around trends. So obviously at the moment we have a big issue, uh, COVID and quarantine and lockdowns and what, however you want to describe it. But that's a topic, you know, topic one if you like, and a really good approach when you're trying to come up with ideas around 
you know, something. You're trying to make it kind of trendy so it's got some hook to make it current or something is then to, you know, combine it with something else. So in this case, we've got cats and we, you know, that's topic two. And, um, and sometimes just by, just by holding those two ideas in your head, you can come up with some ideas, but usually it helps to kind of drill down a little bit. And if we think about this, this, uh, cat routine, cat, cat routine design, um, it's obviously an attempt to do that, but I think it, it's not the best. And I think we can come up with some better ones. And a good strategy for doing this is simply to list out some words around both your topics and see if you can find some obvious kind of um, links between the two, whether those are kind of grammar based and pun based, or whether there's some other kind of concept based stuff that you can work them together. So around COVID, obviously, we've got words like um, quarantine, as we've seen, let me drop this down a bit even further. Quarantine, COVID, um, Corona virus. Um, I don't know things like washing hands. So this is kind of what I would usually do, either explicitly or kind of mentally, just kind of list out some concepts and ideas that are around this thing. Um, um, washing hands, social distancing anything like this around this. So you're really just looking for other words, related terms, anything around that topic. For cats, obviously you've got things like kittens, uh, meow, um, I don't know, fur, anything like that, anything that can kind of reference both of those. Um, so um, returning to our design, the design we have here in front of us from who was it again? From Chak, Chak, Catrantine. So I think that's the, the joke he's gone for, but I don't think it's especially effective. Um, and I would suggest some alternatives. For example, um, I had I wrote a few of these down before briefly. So obviously the, the, the pun is cats and quarantine and cats run teen. I think it's a weak pun and I know because I've used a lot of weak puns in my time, let me tell you. So here's some better ones. Um, cat coronavirus. Cat coronavirus, I think could be better. What about quarren kittens? I think that's a, a slightly better pun, slightly better. Um, meow shul distancing could work. Um, wash your paws, something like that, something simple, kind of backing away from the attempt to combine two words. Um, Catvid19, where a meowsk, where a meowsk, um, something like that. So yeah, I think, let me list out a few of these and I think they would just be better puns, if that makes sense. Um, so which is my favorite? Um, even just like, cause in, in the attempt to combine coronavirus with cats or whatever, you know, you could do something really simple, which is just a cat, you know, kind of looking, I don't know, um, unhappy, which is what most cats look like most of the time, I suppose. Um, and you could just say, um, keep your distance. Maybe you could put a mask on the cat if you want. Um, so really simple. And there's no, there's no cat joke in there. Um, or you could do something like, um, I mean, you could maybe you'd want to rework the illustration a bit, but again, a simple illustration of a cat somehow combined with COVID and do wash your paws. I think that could work as well. These are obviously really simple, um, but uh, other other ideas like what did I have? Cat coronavirus or quarren kittens. I think quarren kittens could be nice because you could do, you know, a few little kittens all climbing together and wearing masks or something. I don't know. Uh, meow shul distancing. Stretching it a little bit there. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. So listing out two different, you know, two concepts and then listing out related topics and just trying to combine them and seeing if anything jumps out is a really good approach. Um, couple of questions on this I see. Dana, are we allowed to make masks or quarantine shirts since it's based on the current pandemic? Um, 
it depends what your who what platform you're talking about, Dana. It's certainly um, uh, working well on Redbubble and T Public and others. I think merch is more complicated, and I uh, don't think they're allowing such designs. But obviously, there's a, there's a world outside of merch. Uh, Catting Quarantino um, says and Holloway, which is an interesting one. Um, John says you can't make COVID shirts, but quarantine shirts are fine on Amazon. Just don't use COVID coronavirus. So there you go. Um, you could you could still do cat coronavirus and not include it in your in your description or title or whatever. So yeah, um, uh, COVID loca, an interesting one. Uh, okay, uh, N says like wash your hands. So yeah, I think we're we're rocking and rolling. Obviously, the concept here is more important than where you would um, eventually upload it. Uh, we're just kind of talking about ideas and improving designs here rather than whether or not you can upload it to merch or wherever or, you know, all those kind of considerations. Okay, should we move on to our next design? How are we doing for time? We're okay. We get through a few more here. So next up we had... Um, uh, okay, this one from Dopey Art. This, I think, is a sloth-based design. Um, hi to you, Sue. And for some reason, it's not loading it. Come on, T Public. Oh, I've got it here. Summertime relaxing, and we've got a picture of a sloth. So, um, similar to previously reviewed, design uh here we've got sloth and summertime and we're combining the two and we've got a sloth with a uh with a nice looking drink and the text reads summertime relaxing um i think the the weakness in this sorry let's talk about the strengths first um it's a really nice illustration very clean nice works well on a shirt um not sure if I would have gone for like a black, usually if, if I'm doing an illustration and it has a black outline, I would then cut the black outline out and then place it on for placing it on black or dark shirts. Um, I suppose it's going to look better on um, on a lighter shirt and now I can't see it. But anyway, that's, um, that's more of a technical thing. Uh, but yeah, the illustration's nice, looks nice. It works nice together, similar style. You know, it looks uh, professional doesn't look amateurish. So that's all good. Um, summertime relaxing, I think just the text doesn't do a lot for me. I think it's a bit weak. And again, we can kind of come up with some ideas here and improve this thing. Um, so I think the way I would approach this is maybe um, see if we can do some kind of pun or something. I was thinking around things like lazy, even just saying something like lazy summer or lazy summer days or um, slow summer could work slow summer days or something um just anything like that because you're not you're not really making a joke there's not really that strong of a, a hook you're simply combining the two things um so i think if you could do you know if it said something like slow summer or i'm having a, a slow summer or something like that i think that would that would add a little bit more of a joke there that you could then play with um and design wise um I do wonder if we're trying to, let me switch to my iPad again. If we are trying to do, if we're trying to compare these two or bring together these two concepts of, you know, summer and sloths, which is really the kind of underlying foundation of the design and the joke. Um, all you've really got in your design is a sloth holding a, a drink and that's fine, but, um, I think you could push it further. And I think, for example, you, your sloth is just hanging on a on a branch and he's just got a drink. I think you could push it. And one of the ways you could do that is to have him looking, doing a bit more summary type stuff. Like he could be holding a surfboard or it could be on the beach or something. Um, so let's say Mr. Sloth is... Um, do they have ears, sloths? I presume they do, but not very obvious um so for example he could be um he could be in the pool maybe like put him in a little kind of pool 
with his drink. There's his drink there. And um, just a simple, you know, I'm not saying like over illustrate anything, just, just to push it a little bit. Um, and then what I would do is maybe he could be bigger in this situation, in this scenario, but I would want to have some elements that really scream summer. So you really make the point obvious, like some palm trees, uh, sunset or sunrise or something going on in the background. I would look for, you know, kind of typical summer beach vibe um, illustrations and designs and kind of do something like that. And then, um, you know, something like this, this is not great. Of course, this is pretty scrappy, but I mean, we could, you could make the sun could be the letter O, so slow summer, and then you could have the kind of rays coming down from the sun like that. Um, I don't know. I just think it could be pushed a little bit further to make it really obvious exactly what we're, what we're going for. So I hope that helps you there, uh, Dopey Art. Roger says, chilling summer. Yep. Um, something like that, slothing around. Yeah, I think I was trying to get some kind of, summer element in there uh gary says slow gin that's a good one again uh, you might want to make it more kind of gin focused in that scenario but still a good one um curious Ooh, cats have nine lives humans need masks that's a good one for combining cats and um cats and coronavirus code whisperer no apostrophe but good idea um not sure what that one is referring to sorry um uh, skunk social distancing expert. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of designs like that. Okay, cool. So um, that's sloths, 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 uh, sloths done for this week. Let's move on to another one quickly, see how many we can get through here. Okay, this one from Nate. Uh, oh, you can't see what I can see. This one is a picture of a balloon and it says, sometimes I just don't feel up for it. So again, if we can kind of split out critiquing the design from talking about the concept. Um, I think the the design is, is fine. I like the font. I like the illustration, nice and simple. Um, seems to be a bit of a gradient going on on the balloon, but I'll let that slide. Um, I think it's not, it doesn't scream t-shirt design to me for one thing. Um, so design wise, I think you could do more to make it look like a t-shirt design rather than it looks to me like a kind of shareable image for Twitter and Facebook and stuff rather than a uh, T-shirt design. Uh, but that could be relatively, you know, simply improved by maybe centralizing the balloon, having the text around it in a kind of central uh, layout way. Um, but let's talk about the concept. So the concept and the joke being um, balloons are blown up and I just don't feel up for it. So I think, I mean, it's not the strongest joke and the strongest concept, but um, I do think, I wonder whether we could kind of take a step back and again, a bit like with the Catrin team, quarantine cats design, just take a step back, look at it from a bird's eye view and go, okay, what's the, what's the underlying joke here? And is there a better way of phrasing it or something like that? Um, and I think... Number one, if you wanted to keep this this text as is, I would simply remove sometimes. I think that would make it a more immediately obvious joke. I think there's a big emphasis on the sometimes in the design, and that's not necessary. So I just don't feel up for it with a picture of a balloon is better. Um, when you think about balloons being filled up, they're being inflated, and that's what we're kind of talking about is this feeling of, I'm not really up for it. I'm I'm feeling deflated. To me, that's a stronger joke, um, saying something like, I feel a little deflated or something like that. And then a picture of a balloon, maybe not this balloon, but more a more deflated balloon um, would kind of make a stronger, you know, version of that concept. So, yeah, I would that would kind of be my approach. I think I would go for something like I feeling a little deflated and maybe let me kind of illustrate it just to just to make the point. And while I'm doing that, um, I will take a look at some concepts. Curious said chillaxing or slow chill. So those are good good ones for the for the sloth. BNA says remove the background and put more distressed face on the balloon. 
Uh, yeah, possibly. The balloon does look quite happy, doesn't it, on the on this design? But yeah, something like um, feeling a little, or we could say, lil deflated, and then you would have a balloon that is a bit more wrinkly. like that or something so obviously very simple but i just think that kind of communicates the crux of the joke a little bit better than sometimes i just don't feel up for it which is a little bit more vague or something um so yeah uh simpler the better generally speaking and i think it's a nice simple design it could just be even simpler and um you know even better that way uh, John says feeling deflated. Yeah, exactly. Could even get rid of a little. Um, works fine. So, okay, uh, who's up next? Uh, which one? Okay, this one from Reagan was was uh, interesting. Let me pull this up. Uh, Roger says, "Yep, show the balloon only half inflated." Yeah, that's this is my supposedly half inflated balloon that you see on your screen. Here. Um, okay. This one from Reagan. Will you love me now? And we have a pig in what I think is a dog costume. Now, um, this is a good a good example just for kind of people sending in designs. Um, I could get the, you know, like with a lot of the designs that you've seen already, I get the joke. I understand it. It's immediately obvious, even if it's not a great design or even if it's not perfectly phrased or could be much more improved i get it you know it's it's obvious i mean it, it does help with this one that it says world of vegan in the bottom corner but still um i just kind of make the point that if 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 you know if i don't get it immediately it probably means i'm not going to be able to really help you improve it because i don't get the concept and without me getting the concept i can't really you know advise or give any you know direction so with this one will you love me now so obviously the joke or the the point is uh if i if a pig dressed up as a dog would you love it now you know you don't eat dogs but you eat pigs why the difference become a vegan um i think the the uh <laughs> so let me talk about the design side so obviously we've got a kind of watercolor um design thing going on which isn't great is not probably not going to translate very well on a t-shirt it would be fine for other products of course you know for greetings cards posters uh, mugs things like that anything that's sublimated would be would be fine but it doesn't necessarily it's not going to look great on a t-shirt so uh in an ideal world redo the illustration um in a more vector style or simple you know line work style um without the the watercolor and the gradients and pick a couple of colors and stick to those um, if we talk about concepts, I don't think it was immediately clear from this, um, from this design that this was supposed to be a dog costume. Um, it, I, I think that's what it is. And, and, you know, it is a bit obvious if you spend a little bit of time thinking about it, but I wonder whether it could be made more, more obvious that this is supposed to be a pig dressed as a dog. And I think maybe that comes because the dog, it's not especially clear what maybe kind of breed of dog this might be or something like that. Um, and even like with the patches and stuff, I almost had a second thought whether it was a cow. So it just wasn't a hundred percent obvious. So, um, and then phrasing wise, will you love me now? Um, I think I would flip that and go the more controversial way perhaps and say, would you eat me now? Um, I think that would work better. Um, so um, let me whoop, pull up my my thing here. Oh, there's some debate going on in the uh, in the comments about whether it's a dog or not. The dog costume isn't obvious enough. John thinks it's a cow. Eileen says maybe you should see the dog's tail. Um, maybe it is a cow, but what would be the uh, because vegans, because people eat cows and pigs, so I don't get the joke if it's supposed to be a cow. Um, Curious says, no matter the skin you're in, no one wants to be eaten. 
Scott says some we love, some we hate, some we eat. Yeah, so these are all kind of vegan concepts and designs. Um, so I think um, if I was doing a design like this, maybe something like, uh, would you still eat me? Or would you eat me now? <laughs> would you eat me now? And then I think we need to make sure our dog, uh, our pig dressed as a dog really is obviously a pig in a dog's costume. Um, and I'm not really sure how you would do that, but I think the secret would be to make the pig look Sorry, make the dog costume look obviously like a dog. Maybe give it big, silly doggy ears and a collar around the neck or something with a lead. Um, just make it like 100% obvious that this is a... The trouble is, of course, the more you make it look like a dog, the less perhaps it looks like a pig. Um, but that's the challenge of this uh, concept, I suppose and the challenge of the illustrator who would be illustrating it, um, which would be me. So um, let's see a couple of more comments coming in here. Code Whisperer, or if a cow just had a cowbell. Yep, that's true. Anything to make it more obvious that it's a dog or whatever, um, or a cow if it's a cow. The debate rages on. Uh, much by pal, it must be an animal that isn't on your plate. Yeah, exactly. So it couldn't be a cow in that case. Um, it's likely to be a dog costume to be relevant to the message. Yes, I agree. Um, uh, play off the Beatles song. Would you still eat me when I'm when I'm a dog breed that rhymes with 64? Anyone? Um, would you eat me when I love you so? Why would you eat me when I love you so? Good question. Um, so yeah, I think would you eat me now? Now that I look like a dog, you could kind of maybe you could push the concept and say maybe there's other animals, maybe there's other pets, maybe you can make it look like a cat or a goldfish, or a hamster, or something. Um, and again, with the same text, would you eat me now? That could still be a pretty solid um, pretty solid joke and would perhaps appeal to, um, to vegans uh, who align with this message. Um, yeah, some good ideas coming in there. Um, looks like a cow pig here. Yeah. Can you eat me now off cell phone? Yeah, good one. Hello to you, Ali. Okay, so there was, whose design was that? It was Reagan's. Um, so thank you for sending that in, Reagan. I uh, hope that helps you with a little bit a uh, little bit of stuff. Gary says, would you still eat me now I'm a Labrador? Would you still eat me now I'm a Labrador? It works, Gary. Thumbs up. Um, I think Gary is fast getting a reputation as the pun pun master in chief uh yeah definitely when i'm a labrador i don't think it would translate that well on a t-shirt i don't think it's that obvious when you put it on a t-shirt but if you're making a youtube video definitely um go with big cute eyes yes always with animals that should be cute should have massive big eyes okay quickly let's uh, rush through a couple of others this one from ahmad um i don't smoke herbs i drink them um so I think this is a good example where there's there's a concept there, but the design is obviously letting it down. And um, I mean, I don't really know much about whether there's well, obviously there are people who like drinking herbal teas and stuff. Whether those people want to be positioned as opposing people who smoke herbs as well, um, I don't know. But I don't smoke herbs; I drink them. Um, I think, I think there's yeah there was there's something in this design which I thought you know there could there could be something there worth pursuing um, as a joke especially around herbal tea fanatics if that's uh, a market I don't know um, I think design wise I I wouldn't go for this kind of flat text as as Ahmed's done I would go more like let's have a nice illustration of something that clearly looks like herbal tea. However you do that, whatever that looks like, I'm not really a herbal tea expert, but I'm sure um, I'm sure people who are would know how, how to make that look or or even like maybe there's 
I don't know, maybe there'd be a certain kind of teapot that you'd have with, with certain herbal teas. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, uh, good, good comment here from Roger, probably a good design for a mug. Yep. That would work. Um, so yeah, this idea of not smoking herbs, but drinking them. Um, so Ahmed's gone for, I don't smoke herbs. I drink them. I wonder whether we could simplify it further. Something like, um, um, Curious has got some good ones here. Shaken, not stirred, steeped, not smoked. The right, that's kind of where I was going. I was thinking, could you do something like less something, more something, or don't smoke them, drink them, or um, yeah, any, anything kind of like that. Um, herbs are for drinking, not for smoking. I don't know. Just I, th I would just kind of push it and, and really just sit down and force yourself to do like maybe 10 or 20 ideas and then pick pick the ones that are the, the catchiest, the shortest, and um, something like that. Um, but yeah, I think there's a couple of things to pursue there, but I wouldn't go with a, a really simple text-based design as Ahmed has here. I mean, I wouldn't do a simple text-based design for almost anything unless I was really just trying to get something out the door very quickly. Um, but yeah, uh, sipping, not tripping. Nice one, Eileen. That is good. Um, less tripping, more sipping. Um, good one. Uh, just shows you how getting a few heads together makes the puns just roll. Uh, okay, let's see what else we got um, here. We've done that one. We've done balloons. We've done summertime relaxing. Um, so I think I've covered most of the designs that I think I could really help with. I think... Um, if I, well, we've got 15 minutes roughly. So if I kind of rush through these, I'll just give some pointers um, on why I think these designs are good or bad or whatever. Um, this one from, from Wolfland, uh, Peace, Love and Reggae Music. So the reason I didn't really kind of review this one is because I didn't couldn't really think of a way to improve it. Um, I think it's apart from one simple thing, which would be, you don't really need music because reggae is music. You don't need to say reggae music. You can just say peace, love, and reggae. And then it's even more succinct, nice, and snappy and tight. Um, so, yeah, uh, design-wise, this is really, really nice. Obviously, the reggae colors kept it to limited colors, nice fonts, some nice uh, elements going on. So we've got a bit of background element as well. We've not just got one flat image. We've got a bit of depth. We've got the colors in the background, just just a nice graphic. I think, you know, if this was uh, pitched to that that market, I think it would it would go down a treat. So, so yeah, no real criticism there, apart from just lose music and make it um, even more straightforward. Nice little design from Wolfland. Um, see what else we got here uh this one from, from jdk it says chihuahuas small but mighty um i uh, don't really know what to say about this design um i think layout wise not this kind of chihuahua text thing it looks to me like a sports team logo i don't know if there is a sports team called the something chihuahuas um but that kind of the way it's laid out kind of throws me off a little bit um and then the small but mighty it looks a little bit like we don't have a complete concept here we have you know a, a graphic with some text and then we have some text just kind of dropped underneath it it doesn't really all fit together and it doesn't really look like a a t-shirt design. Um, someone says it's infringing. Um, maybe that's uh, the case, in which case then that's a problem. Um, if the kind of approach though is to do a design around chihuahuas, then I would always kind of go back to a couple of the methods we've already kind of covered. Is there some kind of pun you can do on chihuahua? There's a lot of sounds in chihuahua that you could play with. Um, something like that. I don't think necessarily saying chihuahua is small and mighty is a great hook. Um, oh, someone says it's El Paso baseball. So yeah, I think this this design as is definitely needs some work, and um, I would I would revisit it. 
on that front. A um, couple of comments that have come in. Um, Roger said, I don't smoke them, I drink them. Yep, that kind of works. Uh, Eileen wins. Uh, yeah, definitely on that one. Uh, Ahmad says, thank you, no problem. Um, yeah, a few more confirmations that that is indeed a logo of a baseball team. So I was right about my minor league team, about my, my hunch there. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of other ones. Uh, this one from Van, Vanessa, perhaps, I think. What doesn't kill me just makes my coffee stronger. Um, Design-wise, yes, as in layout-wise, good. Um, handwritten or rough style font, which is which is good. Um, I think the the illustration is very simple, so it doesn't need to be so big because we, you know, you could shrink that down to like a quarter the size, and we'd still recognize what it's supposed to be. So I'm not really sure why you've gone for such a a tall um, a tall design. Um, Having said that, that's kind of on the design side. On the concept side, I found it a little bit uh, difficult to understand. I mean, I think I get it. What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. What doesn't kill me just makes my coffee stronger. But I'm failing to see the obvious connection there. Like, if something doesn't kill you, how does that make your coffee stronger? Is it like I get tougher, therefore I drink stronger coffee? This is the way my mind works. It just doesn't, it wasn't an immediate obvious joke to me. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe that's a phrase that coffee drinkers say or whatever, in which case, fine. And in which case, we draw it back to, to a design critique. And um, yeah, design wise, I don't know why it's so tall. I would make it more of a rounded design unless you have a real reason to do otherwise. Um, and I think the, the image could be, you know, there's lots of ways to illustrate coffee. You can do a coffee cup, you can do coffee beans, you can do a coffee pot, you can do all of the above and tie them all together somehow. Um, I think there's a there's a few better ways to to illustrate this than this simple, pretty bland coffee cup, which isn't really, you know, it's it's obvious that you're talking about coffee. It's obvious it's like a Starbucks coffee takeout cup or something, but it's not, in my opinion, um you know, the most kind of aesthetically, visually pleasing way to illustrate coffee, if that makes sense. Okay. A um, couple of others here. Uh, this one from Irina. Uh, this uh, says one a hand and it's a cat with what looks like an oven mitt on his head. Um, again, personally, it's not my kind of uh, design because I'm not really seeing an obvious uh, hook, really, or who I'm gonna who I'm gonna send this design to. Is it people who like cats who are gonna like it? Perhaps, yeah, okay. So we could go down that approach, but it's there's not an obvious kind of joke I, unless you kind of go with oh the cat's got a mitten on his head, therefore one a hand is a is a kind of joke on that. So yeah, um, this is Irina's style. It's, you know, it works with her style. I know that she already has people who like her designs and buy them. So it's not really something that I should even be critiquing because it's working for her. So um, is there a way to push the concept further? I don't really have a handle on the concept, so I can't really comment on that. But um, but yeah, fits Irina's style. I like the um, like the style. I get it. I just don't think, you know, I wouldn't be putting this up on on uh, Red Bull and merch and stuff and expecting it to to really make much of a an impact. Um, Scott says kitten in a mitten. Now there's a nice little pun um, that we could have used. Kitten in a mitten um, is cute as well. Kittens with mittens. Um, B and A says I think it means there's a cat trying to help out in the kitchen. Um, okay, yeah. I, I guess I could get that. So it's kind of like the kind of design you might see on something in the kitchen, whether that's an oven mitt or a, a kitchen towel or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, but I don't think it necessarily shouts T-shirt design, um, which is nothing wrong with that, of course. We're creating designs for all kinds of different uh, things and concepts. Okay. Um, there were a few others which... Um, 
maybe I should just share these an example of what not to send in because I struggle to understand them um, or really give much advice. So I'll just go through these quickly. One says get out of jail free. Valid in all states. I just didn't get the joke. Sorry, whoever sent this one in. I think that one was Andy. Just don't get the, the concept there. Um, this one was from e Ilka just music and we got a guitar i mean graphically there's you know you can see it's been done by someone who's got a little bit of graphic design ability but concept wise i just don't really know how to advise on this because it's just so broad and so vague and there's very little to really um to get my teeth into if that makes sense um again i would go go back to the three questions who is going to wear this design why are they going to wear it and how are they going to find it and on this one, uh, who's going to wear it? Maybe someone who likes guitars. But as soon as you answer that question, the, you immediately go for, well, someone who likes guitars, they don't just want to wear any T-shirt with a guitar. They maybe have a particular kind of music they like or they have a particular guitar that they're into, whether that's a Telecaster or a Les Paul or whatever it is. Um, so, and and the phrase just music is so broad and, and nebulous um, that we you know, we want something much more specific for that group of people. So hope that kind of helps. And then this one um, from uh, just L says, Artopus class, create differently. And it's an octopus with a few paintbrushes and stuff. Um, again, don't really get what's going on. If, if I was sent this design without the text, it would make more sense. And I think there could be something... Um, going on there but again the kind of especially the design style doesn't really lend itself to t-shirts um i think the idea of a uh, an octopus who's an artist now there's two things you could combine probably some puns in there some you know lots of paintbrushes that could be a nice design um octopus is a nice you know nice subject to design and and draw because they they give you options you know you can do lots of things with their arms and stuff they're a nice a nice thing to illustrate so um so yeah, I think that's that's something that could work. An artist octopus, an artipus, but not like this, and certainly not with this text, which just kind of confuses things, I think. Um, so yeah, but I could imagine like an uh, octopus cartoon style, vector style, um, some kind of joke around that, some kind of phrase that you could find that would make that work. So hope that helps you guys there. Um, and then Barbara had one here. I think Barbara was first, um, and it's Statue of Liberty, I think, throwing Donald Trump um, out of America, I suppose. And it says bye-bye. I think, um, again, it really helps to step away and narrow down what your design is about. And uh, especially like, you know, on, on Redbubble and Public and merch, you have to describe your design. I think if, if sometimes if we did that before we sat down to create the design, we'd actually probably help ourselves quite a bit. Um, if you had to explain the design without visuals, you had to just describe it to someone, um, that would kind of focus the mind on, okay, am I doing a good job of communicating the, the message that I'm trying to communicate? So again, um, let's talk about the design on this one. Uh, very a uh, scrappy kind of style, which doesn't translate well to T-shirts. I don't know why it's in a big circle. I don't know why uh, we've got, you know, kind of different styles. It doesn't, it's not obvious that the Statue of Liberty is throwing Donald Trump here. The illustration is very small in terms of the canvas. So it's not, you know, you have to kind of double take to check what you're looking at. Um, and the text just doesn't really add anything and you could probably lose the text focus on the concept of the statue of liberty throwing donald trump that could probably be a better a better idea but um but yeah it's just it's struggling on a lot of different levels this one i think as as it stands and uh i would revisit the concept is there something you could do with the statue of liberty versus donald trump i think there is i think it's probably been been attacked uh already by by probably lots of people um but yeah it's a difficult one to illustrate as well if you're trying to illustrate like the statue of liberty throwing 
Donald Trump. Like, obviously, you want to make sure it's Donald Trump, but he's very small in relation to the Statue of Liberty, which means when you size that, you can't really get them both in in a meaningful way, in a way that looks nice. What you might have to do is something like have Donald Trump coming towards the viewer being thrown and the Statue of Liberty in the background. I don't know. Uh, thinking out loud, but there's a lot of... Um, a lot of things to consider there. Okay, I think we covered all the designs there just in time. So um, let me see any comments that have come in here or questions. B &A. Oh, yeah, we did that one. Kitten and a mitten. Uh, someone says looks more like a poster than a T-shirt. Um, yeah, someone on the octopus one, again, I think, doesn't even need words, just add a beret and a palette. Um, statue kicking him might be better. But yeah, going to need much better illustration. Okay, cool. I think we've caught up there. So any min any last minute questions you guys want to ask before I round it up here? Um, and while I'm doing that, I'll uh, remind you to sign up if you haven't already at michaelessick.com slash live, where you can get free resources. You'll also be signed up to my free weekly newsletter where I email you about tips and tricks to help you improve your t-shirt sales and also keep you up to date on what's happening in print on demand world. Obviously this week we have had a big uh, announcement from Merch by Amazon. They've launched France, Italy, and Spain or Fritz. There's a video on my YouTube channel about that if you want to check that out um, and kind of what that looks like. So that's pretty interesting. A few of the bits I'll be emailing out about tomorrow. Um, but if you'd like to win a copy of my book the little book of t-shirt ideas then once this live stream finishes please go over to my youtube channel find this video and comment beneath in the comments tell me what you got out of this one uh, if there was any tips or particular bits of advice that stuck with you and i will pick one at random and you will get a free copy of my book and i'll let you know about the winner before next week's stream unlike we did this time but i will go back and someone will be winning the t-shirt from last week as well um Couple of questions and stuff coming in here, Gary. Oh, sorry, Gray Elephant Club. Is there a way to teach us about font choices? Um, I think if you, th there's probably plenty of information online. If you if you do some searches around, I don't know, font tutorials or font uh, matching, something like that. Uh, general principles are that you want to um, really limit your font choices. Of course, similar kind of concept to limiting your colors. You want to keep things simple. Don't use too many different fonts. Usually you would want to contrast uh, fonts. If you are using two fonts or more, then one would be a serif and one would be a sans serif. And those usually would be a nice a nice pairing. Um, apart from that, I don't really, don't really have anything off the top of my head that I could advise. So I would just recommend you go and have a, have a search on Google or YouTube for, for font uh, pairing or font matching. There are websites that will... Uh, show you how fonts match and kind of give you like recommended font matching, but they're usually built for more like uh, web website designers and stuff rather than t-shirt designers. Um, probably the best advice is to just kind of look at good examples of t-shirt designs and kind of analyze how they're approaching uh, fonts. Uh, DS Y song. How about Liberty toppling Trump statue? Um, yeah, maybe. I don't. Is there a Trump statue um, that's recognizable? Um, oh, yeah, maybe like you could have the two fighting in some way, like a kind of um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers kind of thing. Um, curious. Yes, but unrelated. What are your thoughts on photos on T-shirts? Yes, no, don't sell great. Um, personally, it's not my not my bag. And I think uh, there are there are very successful photographers who sell their work online. I, I doubt that most of their sales would come from T-shirts. I think they would generally find most of their sales coming from prints and posters and things like that, um, which, of course, there are many sites that sell those and canvas prints and things. So, uh, yes, I think if you're a photographer, there's many options for you to sell and make money from your photographs online. Uh, but T-shirts probably aren't the – they're not where I'd start. I would certainly go – first towards things like uh, prints and posters and and those kind of things. Some, a site like Fine Art America, which is probably the biggest print-on-demand site for that kind of stuff, um, you'll see the kind of products they do, calendars, wall calendars, uh, all that kind of stuff. Or, um, 
yeah, there's plenty of places where you can sell photographs. I just don't think they they translate very well to t-shirts in most cases. <clears throat> okay, Dobby says thanks. Eileen says thanks. Scott says thanks. Thaddeus says thanks. Gray, Gray. I keep wanting to call Gray Gary. Uh, good stuff as always. How was your vacation? Thank you for asking. It was okay. <laughs> no, it was nice to have a little bit of a break. I did I did get sunburnt for a few days and uh, went pink for a day or two, and now I'm uh, getting back to pale white. Um, yeah, went to North Wales. It was nice. It was sunny for a few days at least. And uh, yeah, kids had fun on the beach and splashing around and bodyboarding and all sorts. So yeah, had a good time. Thank you for asking. Sue says... Oh, Barbara says, thanks so much. Thank you. And BNA says, thanks. Uh, Sue says, thanks. Gary says, great stuff. Raymond says, thanks. Uh, Stan says, hi, Michael. What are your thoughts on Redbubble's new product range, aprons or puzzles? Um, don't really have much of an opinion on it, Stan. Uh, I don't really see much of an appeal for aprons, uh, puzzles, either really for my kind of designs. However, apparently there is quite an uptick in in um, in puzzles and jigsaw puzzles at the moment. What with everyone being locked down, so if you do have what what I wouldn't do is be like, oh, I'm just going to put my designs on jigsaw puzzles. But the fact that there is now the possibility of doing print on demand jigsaw puzzles would lead me to start thinking, what would be a good jigsaw puzzle that I could create? And it wouldn't look like a t-shirt design, of course. It would look like a jigsaw puzzle. That would be a good place for photographs of course as well um but yeah not really got much thoughts on on them at all beyond that uh kathleen says thanks kushbu says thanks spencer says thanks and dana says thanks okay i think we'll leave it there for today guys thank you for joining me if you would be so kind as to like and subscribe um that would be wonderful and uh if you want to win a copy of the little book of t-shirt ideas then once this is over please go and comment on the youtube video on the comments underneath that would be great uh should be here same time next week for another live if you have any questions or you want one-on-one uh, -on -one help with your designs or your print on demand business in any sense then you can email me i will get back to you about uh about that and yeah we'll leave it there for today i uh, hope you have a great rest of your week and a good weekend and i'll talk to you next week okay see you later guys Bye bye